Good everyone, thanks for stopping by. Uh, today's video is going to be doing a few little things on the Pajero, which were unplanned sort of maintenance that needs to happen. I've got a bearing on the right hand side at the rear wheel uh, that needs to be changed. I did go to book it in the mechanics, but it's going to take about a month to get it in. I'm going to go away camping before then. I'm going to be dragging the trailer, so I really want to get that sorted out. Now I was just going to leave it and let the mechanic do it, but when I was heading away to go camping with Tim a few days ago, the left rear brake pad wore out and it's ground the shit <laughs> out of the rotor. So I'm gonna do the we're gonna do the rear brake pads, we're gonna do the left rear rotor, we're gonna swap that out, and then we're gonna do the right rear hub assembly. Just a quick one, at the start of this video I'm talking about doing the hub on the right hand side. Uh, to replace the bearing unit. Unfortunately, when I went to get the hub off, I couldn't get those four bolts off on the back. I tried heat, I tried the breaker bar, I tried a whole bunch of stuff and it just wouldn't work. So I ended up giving the mechanics a call locally and asking them if they could get it done for me. Uh, a different mechanic that I was gonna take it to and they got it in within two days. Now, when I went to pick it up, the mechanic actually said to me, he said, mate, you were never getting those bolts out. Uh, I said, mate, yeah, I know, I had a good crack at it, and I said, I even broke a breaker bar. <sighs> Was our super cheap breaker bar. And that's car, so I'm pretty... Hammered myself here on the shoulder. <laughs> you see where you can see where I've hit myself. But um, you can see that has absolutely just shattered. So that's not good at all. I went down to Bunnings, and we've got a substantially more solid breaker bar. This is a Kin Chrome, 80 bucks. Uh, so this is a half inch. Sorry, this is a three quarter inch socket. Uh, trying to work on it, he said, "Yeah, so did we." So they actually broke some of their, um, so they actually broke their tools as well, trying to get those bolts off the back of that hub. Uh, they're on there so tight. So the good news is the hub's replaced. It's reduced a whole lot of that noise that I was getting at the back. Uh, there is still a little bit of noise there, but that's just tire wear. Uh, that's why in this video you're only going to see me do the uh, the rotor and the brake pads. We're not actually going to get around to doing the bearing. We're heading away camping with Tim. I go to pull up, knowing that you know, the bearing is something that's on the list, so I've got to get sorted, but thinking I'll just chuck it in that mechanics, don't need to worry about that. Um, and as I've gone to pull up to where I'm meeting Tim, just before we head up the mountain, I've got a horrendous grinding coming from the back of the car, and I'm like, oh, that's a brake pad. I'm thinking, it's either that bearing gone, let's let it go, or it's a brake pad, because it just sounds like brake pad, metal on metal. Normally they give you a little bit of warning, but this one didn't. So I've got down, and you can see this has absolutely scored the shit out of this rotor. You can see that top, you can see that top half an inch or so in there is well and truly scored. And I can see that there is no meat on those brake pads. So consequently, we are doing, uh, I'll probably get away with getting that machine, but I figure I'll just put a new one on it. Now keeping in mind that I've never done a rotor or a bearing hub, uh, so this will be a learning experience for both of us, but disclaimer, not a professional, just a guy that gets in and has a crack and uh, takes you along for the experience and hopefully you can learn something there as well, whether it goes well or horribly wrong. Okay, so down at the shops, uh, went with the brake pads, these are the Bendix Ultra Premium. There is a four-wheel drive variant of the Bendix as well, which I think is what I've actually got in the front uh, of the Pajero, I'm not totally sure. That being said, I really should have checked the shed because I think last time I bought brake pads for the Bajero. I think they gave me the back ones by mistake. And I think I ended up keeping them, thinking I'll use those eventually anyway. So I might have wasted. Uh, I'll put all the prices up for all the stuff that I bought. I think the Bendix brakes were somewhere around the $70 to $80. Super cheap. NEC's copper grease. I was hoping for the tub with the brush on it, but it didn't happen. Just got this little, little pry bar just for taking the, um, the little hub cap off. Some radiator flush for the Commodore. 36 mil socket, uh, which is gonna fit my breaker bar, which I'm gonna need to use to break the axle nut, or the uh, yeah the spindle nut off. 
Um, I'm hoping it's 36. I, I did read somebody that somebody said a 35. Uh, the hub assembly itself. So I'm hoping they've got all these parts right because obviously they're going to have the car apart. You can just buy the bearing. Um, but I, and I, I've got a press in there, but realistically, I don't know what the bearing was worth. You have to press it in there anyway, out of the old hub, press the old one out. So I've literally just got the hub assembly, four bolts on the back. It's got the boring bearing already seated, and uh, look, it's just, just simpler. Uh, now, there are a number of different variants in these. You can go super cheap, not as in super cheap auto. You can get these from super cheap though. But if you're having a look online, you're gonna see these as cheap as about 130 bucks or something like that from eBay. I chose to go with this one, which was 380 bucks. I probably could have saved myself a bit of money on that by going direct to the supplier, which ironically is where I had to go to get the brake rotor. Really hoping they've got their part numbers and stuff right because uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. But that's our brake rotor there. Just have a look. There might actually be screws holding those brake rotors on. I'm not entirely sure. So we need to give that a spray down, give that a wipe because they're oiled up um, to stop the getting surface rust, etc. But we don't want to worry about that. This is not going to be an overly detailed video. I know I say that, but because the process on all of these should be very simple. So, so to start, we're going to take this rear left one off, um, which is the one that needs the new rotor. And now assuming all goes well with this rotor, it's as simple as I expect it to be, I'm actually going to upgrade the front rotors to slotted discs. Because one of the guys that I know that's got a Triton did that on his, and he reckons the initial bite and the braking performance is uh, much, much better than the OEM stuff. So We're going to take the wheel off. We're going to obviously throw it under the side there. That's going to offer us some sort of protection there as well. Now, before anybody asks, 27565. 18. So obviously got me safeties on. Trying this dust, especially considering some of it may be brake dust. Most of this is just dirt. Just bring in, give you an idea of what you're looking for. You can see our brake pads here, and you can see that's the backing. So that's that's the metal basically, which is now making contact with our rotor and you can see from here upwards that's that big gouge uh, that's been made by actually making metal to metal contact so we've no longer got any more we've no longer got brake pad left it's just the uh, the holder or the back of the brake pad that's now making contact with here so we've worn it down so far as far as removing the brake pads we're just going to undo this one here that's holding on the, the clamp, the, the piston effectively, the, the mechanism that actually does the moving. We'll loosen this one up here. That's gonna allow us to pivot that whole section up and pull those brake pads. And then we're gonna come down here, undo this one. And we're gonna undo do this one. I think it's up here, it's hard to do it in the camera, but I think it might be that one. And then take off that holder that actually supports the piston in place. And then that should allow us just to knock that that rotor off. Doesn't appear to be being held on. Sometimes there's screws and stuff holding them on. There is this thing here, uh, but I don't think that's actually holding it on. So anyway, let's get stuck in here. Zara 17. So I have changed the brake pads on the front of the Pajero, but I'm yet to do the ones on the back. So a little bit curious how hard these bolts are gonna be to undo. Not too bad. Another tool that's really handy and probably should be in your shed is some sort of breaker bar. So it's going to have like a half inch socket on the end. It just gives you that little bit of extra leverage to be able to just crack hard nuts. And the other thing you can do is stick another bar on the end of this and give yourself a heap of leverage and it just really works on stuck bolts. So we're going to probably need to do that on that bearing on the other side. You don't always need the longest breaker bar you can get. Make sure you get a nice solid one, but sometimes a smaller breaker bar, this is probably, I don't know, 
small to medium, I guess. A bit over 12 inches, I suppose, 14, 16 inches, something like that. This is really handy because you can get in wheel arches and stuff like that and still be able to work and still get your leverage. If you get a bar that's just too long, you'll find that you just can't get it in the spots where you need to put it, so. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have two. Get a real long one. But get a shorter one, stick a bar, stick a pipe over the top, and then you've got a long one. So it's worth having a look at these when you pull these out. These are your sliders for your, your brakes. Um, just to make sure that they're not scored or damaged or anything like that. Uh, if they are, you probably need to look at replacing those, but I'm expecting these to be in good condition. So now that we've loosened this top bolt, we've taken this one out. This should just swing straight up. That's actually your piston that pushes the brake pads together. So you can see that's out there at the moment. We'll give it a bit of a brush because we're going to need to give it a bit of a clean up. Now I'm not going to give this a full blast of air because I don't want to blow any dust in behind that piston seal. Inside is fine. And then the general area is fine, but not around that seal. Little pry bar that we bought for a few bucks. It's going to come in very handy here for just behind those brake pads. Just levering those out. Now they should just come straight out. Wow, okay, this is the culprit, so that's been. Normally when your brake pads go, you'll get a little bit of a warning, you'll hear a little bit of a noise and you'll go, oh, I need to check those and there'll be a little bit left. But this one really went down to nothing and you can see where, that's where it's been making metal to metal contact there. And that groove there, which I think is the contact points for the actual pad material, is what's done all the damage. You can see that just there. So anyway, so one brake pad. I'm going to leave these clips in. Jesus, and the one on the other side isn't much better. You can see that little bit of material left, but it's not much that space. Not much wonder they were grinding. So I've just got some our brake cleaner. Just gonna give the whole general area a bit of a spray here. Don't breathe this shit. Drop that back down with our pads out. Now keep in mind when you've got your pads out, do not, <laughs> do not put your brake foot on the brakes. We're gonna put this pin back in. And we're gonna remove that whole assembly. It's all 17 mil, you beauty. So these bolts are fairly short. That's one. Oh, and then, this whole assembly should just now peel off and we are going to rest it just up there out of the way. Depending on your circumstances you may need to have a bungee or something like that so you can use to hook it up onto something, a bit of coat hanger, something like that, just to get it up and out of the way. What I should be able to do is just whack this rotor to loosen it up, to break it loose and it should just pull off. So let's find out, eh? Beautiful. So that's our rotor off. And you can see our uh, pad assembly for our handbrake. Now again, brake dust, carcinogenic. Do not breathe it. Okay, so that's, that's easy. Brake rotor off. So we just need to go over the other one, give it a bit of a spray down with our brake cleaner. Now uh, give it a wipe off, come and throw it on. There is oil on them, so they don't get surface rust on them. You actually see all that in the bottom of the container there. Just hit it with brake cleaner and give it a clean. So, literally brake cleaner. 
see the whole thing a spray, in particular the rotor itself. See all that oil that's on there. Another spray. And again, focusing on the rotor itself. I'm going to wipe down. In here, just a wire brush. Give her a bit of a brush off. Just a clean up in general, really. Just on the face to stop any seizing later on. Just a little bit of copper grease. Try and avoid touching the surface of the rotor, obviously. <coughs> so grab a wheel nut, just throw that on to hold it on while you're working on that uh, brake caliper. Have our brake caliper, it's on brakes. We need to recompress that actual piston back in. All I'm going to do is get this mechanism back on and then we'll actually take the caliper out and we'll play around with that. So we've put those two bolts back in for the carrier. We've taken that bottom pin out so we can swing this up. What we need to do now is just compress this piston back in. And uh, what I find useful is just to use one of the brake pads that you've got and a little G clamp. So, so you can see this is the piston that we need to push back in. What I need to do is just go to the front of the car, pop the bonnet and just open the cap to the uh, reservoir for the brakes. And when we push this back in, it's gonna push fluid back up the line. You know, I've got a bit of room uh, in that reservoir for, for movement, so it's not gonna overflow. Just stick it in front of it like that. And we're just gonna find which one of these guys works best. Might be the four. Put the G-clamp on the back of this. Now you want to try and push this in as square as possible. So you'll see what I've got going on here is a four inch clamp. One end is just on this little bolt on the back. Onto the brake pad itself. Sorry, this sun is terrible. This light is terrible, but it's what I've got to work with. So onto the brake pad itself. And then we're just going to wind this in. Uh, I don't think I can do this one handed. And uh, that's just going to push that that's just going to push that piston back in and we'll just keep going until that's seated. That's it, so we wind her all the way down. She's nice and flush. Take that brake pad out and you'll see she's in, she's nice and flush. Now if you have, this is just brake cleaner that I've just sprayed on, but if you have any fluid or anything coming out here, you're looking at a seal kit. So make sure you get it in flush. If it goes in square or if it jams or something like that, then you're probably going to need to have a look at servicing your actual brake caliper itself. Well, when you buy brake pads, you're going to get them in a set and it's going to be a set of four. So it's going to be uh, for all, so you'll either get a set of fronts or a set of backs. Oh, I don't want to break this in case they've given me the wrong ones. That's happened before. Up. Now again, avoid getting oil or anything like this onto these. Yeah, okay, I thought I remembered this from last time I did the front ones. These are listed as the premiums at Super Cheap. And they do have a four-wheel drive one as well. They do have a they do have a four-wheel drive variant one as well. But when I opened these, and this is what I found on the last one, but I couldn't remember that. But it does say four-wheel drive on these here. So what the difference between these and their four-wheel drive ones are, I don't know. Now normally they're in pairs, so usually you can just grab one pair, put the other side like that. And you'll see, this is the pad, <laughs> hang on. This is what a pad should look like. Can you see the difference? So this is all the braking material this is just the backing plate which is what i had left so that's what they should look like as far as putting these back in you really can't go wrong 
They will only fit in one way. So just lean them in on a bit of a back angle like that. Push down that clip and then just push them in. It's going to do the same on the other side. So when you've got that on, you'll see they'll just be seated on either side of the, the rotor. That's what they're going to look like. So just leave them sit there. Grab your caliper with your piston pushed all the way in. He should fit nicely over the top of those. Just like give it a little bit of our bearing grease. Just give it a touch with that. Just keep an eye on those little rubber bits that are between the actual piston and the carrier. And then just uh, screwing those in. He's done. That's all there really is to it. We need to tighten these up the spec. It's going to go about my torque wrench. Now I'm going to look up the specs. Tighten all these up the spec. And then all we're going to do is put that wheel back on and get under this hub. That side done. I'm going to take it for a quick lap and stick this wheel back on. We really don't want to be doing both sides at once and then taking it for a run and hearing a noise or something and not knowing which side it come from. So I want to make sure this side's right first. So I figure I'd, the stuff that I do some of you guys that watch my channel, I guess, know what you're doing. So, you know, I'm not teaching you how to suck eggs. So I have kept this fairly basic. Uh, but hopefully it's sufficient for somebody who wants to have a crack at the job to be able to do it. Um, at the very least, you could sort of watch through this. Again, because I haven't got into a huge amount of detail. That might motivate you to go, Oh, yeah, that didn't appear too hard. I can have a go at that. And then you can go and do a bit more research and and uh, find something that's got a bit more of a detailed look at it and then you can have a crack at it yourself. If you need that level of support, yeah, realistically these are easy jobs. Brake pads um, and that rotor obviously now is something that I think most people can do. Keep in mind this is on the Pajero, but I think you're gonna find most of your four-wheel drives and stuff are gonna be fairly similar, certainly from the research I've done. If you are new to this, this was gonna be the point. When you're doing your wheel nuts up, doing them up diagonally, so do one, two, three, four, five, six. So just do them opposite each other if you can. Don't just go around the circle because uh, that'll put the wheel on a bit of an angle and you might strip a thread or something. So go opposites and then once you've done that, then just go in a circle so you make sure you've got them all and just tighten them back up. So point in case, we'll start at the top one here. Get that one done up and we'll go straight down to the bottom one. That one's done. We'll go up to the top right. Down to our bottom left. Over to our mid right. Up to mid left. And then now that I've gone the opposites, I'm just going to go around from top. Just to give them that little bit of an extra tighten, because sometimes they will tighten up a little bit once you've got the other ones done. I'm going to drop the old girl down on the guts and leave all the tools here and uh, we're going to come back and have a go at that hub. Alright so successful um, run just around the block just to check the brakes. I've checked the brake fluid at the front it hasn't overflowed or anything like that. I've still got about this much left at the top. Good so that's still going to give me plenty of room for the one on the right hand side to replace those pads and push that in without having to worry about bleeding the system. Just going to jack up this side and we're going to get into that hub. It is starting to come overcast, which is the good news. It's stopping my head getting so burnt. But the bad news is, I might get rain. I've got tools and shit everywhere. So overall, I reckon these jobs are well within the range of anybody who's got just some basic tools at home. And hopefully this video will help you have a go at it if you're so inclined. I'm going to have a look at uh, replacing both of the rotors on the front and putting on some slotted discs there. and. Uh, to see how those go. So, look, that's not going to be in the next week or so. That's going to be a little while off. That'll be coming up in the future. In the meantime, <coughs> thanks very much for stopping by. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. And just a quick one before you go. Um, just want to say a quick shout out to the guys on the Bajero forums and stuff like that. Um, I am seeing that when people ask questions and I've done a video or something like that, uh, there's lots of people linking to my videos or making reference to my videos saying, look, yeah, Den Monkey's done this, Den Monkey's done that. Um, so thanks guys, I don't know, it just shows that the effort and stuff that I'm putting in 
uh, just to filming it uh, is worth it and it's actually helping people out. Because uh, I've mentioned it before in videos, if I want to learn how to do something, and some of these tasks I've even done myself in the past, I'll go on YouTube it and I'll see if somebody's done it, and if I can see somebody do it, I'm happy to have a go at it myself. It just gives you an idea how hard the job might be. Just wanted to give you an overview so you can have a quick look at it and go, yeah, look, you know what, that's something I can probably have a go at. So, there you go. Again, get out of here. Thanks very much, and we'll see you real soon, eh?